Today's apologists claim, Evolution is impossible because both sexes would have to evolve at the same time. This mostly young Earth creationist claim comes from a fundamental misunderstanding of how new species evolve. They have this notion that evolutionary theory claims one member of a population can give birth to a random mutant that is a new, different species. And these creationists will argue that unless another member of the population gives birth to an opposite sex version of the same mutant within the same lifetime, the new species will be unable to reproduce and will thus go extinct within a single generation. And since the chances of a male and female version of the same mutant species being born in the same lifetime is highly improbable, evolution could never produce new species. Except that that's not at all how evolution works. Creationists should realize that something is wrong with their concept of it, since nearly all of them already believe in a limited version of evolution. This is because they realize there is no way Noah's Ark was anywhere near large enough to fit two of every animal species that have ever lived, a number likely in the hundreds of millions at least. So they assume that there was one basic kind of each animal type, which then diversified into multiple distinctly different but similar species once they left the Ark. For example, there was one basic cat kind that diversified into lions, tigers, cheetahs, leopards, lynxes, saber-toothed cats, domestic cats, and so on. But how do creationists imagine such diversification occurred? Did a basic cat give birth to a female tiger around the same time that another basic cat gave birth to a male tiger? Then the two tigers grew up and went off to populate their natural environment? Not even creationists make that claim. A basic principle of evolutionary theory is that evolution works on populations, not on individuals. Generally speaking, species only give birth to their own species, but every individual possesses dozens of minor genetic mutations that are slightly different from their parents' genes. Those with mutations that are beneficial in their environment tend to survive better than those with neutral or harmful mutations, and so those beneficial mutations tend to spread throughout the population. This is called natural selection. Over time, natural selection can gradually change the genetic makeup of a population enough that they become an entirely new species. And as members of a species migrate to different environments, and mutation and natural selection continue to genetically modify the species, you eventually end up with multiple new species. This is how the original cat species evolved into all the cat species we're familiar with today. Notice that at no point does any individual give birth to a whole new species, and yet the whole population gradually evolves into a new species. For anyone still struggling to understand how this could happen, here is a useful analogy. We know that modern Italian, Spanish, Portuguese, French, and Romanian evolved from Latin. Does that mean one day a Latin-speaking couple from ancient Rome had a child who grew up spontaneously speaking Italian? Of course not. Every Roman grew up speaking the same language as his or her parents. However, within the various regions populated by Romans, each generation introduced slight changes to the Latin vocabulary, grammar, spelling, and so on, such that over the course of hundreds of years, Latin became Italian, Spanish, Portuguese, and so on. I should also note that creationists often claim they accept microevolution, but not macroevolution. However, microevolution is evolution within a species, and macroevolution is evolution beyond the species level. And since creationists claim a single basic cat species evolved into all the distinctly different cat species we see today, in reality they already accept macroevolution. Both microevolution and macroevolution occur by the same process, it's just that creationists imagine there is some kind of barrier that prevents evolution from continuing beyond the ill-defined kind level referenced in the Bible. At any rate, creationists who accept that species can evolve into distinct new species must realize that their idea of evolutionary theory positing new species being born in a single generation is simply wrong.